SpaceX Starlink powered by AMD? What? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. So smoky, enjoyable. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day and it is Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Samhain, All Hallows Eve, whatever you would like to call it. My favorite time of the year. I absolutely love it. Love it. Love it. So today we're going to be talking about SpaceX Starlink and how they are now going to start using AMD for their processing, which I think is kind of strange. I was reading an article about this and uh, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know. But... After we read this article, I want to give you my commentary on it, and I want to know your thoughts about this. What do you think? Because I think that this is an interesting move, but I think that they need to get away from using third parties, and I'll tell you why before the end of the video. So before we get into this article, I want to say that if you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up. That's very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, I appreciate that. Click this little notification button so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Matter of fact, Friday, we should be live, the JC Live Show. Free Speech Friday, as we call it. Join us. It's a lot of fun. 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Also, you can pick up my free eBooks over my website, jcristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash books. And if you want to just say thank you for all of my hard work, it's a thank you button. Click on that. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more Starlink specific content, I put together about 360 videos just for you. Go check them out. That's over the last 47 months. It's a lot. A lot of good information. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy and what not to buy. And of course, the why behind all of it. This channel has always been about the why and it will continue being about the why. So let's get into this article. Once again, I'll give my commentary and then I want to hear from you down below. And if you don't want to say anything, that's fine. Put an emoji down there that is very helpful. So there's some interaction. I know that you're actually listening. Put an emoji. I don't care what kind of emoji you want to put down there. Put something festive. Maybe something Halloweeny. I don't know. Halloweeny? Yeah, Halloweeny. AMD, widely recognized for powering PCs and gaming consoles, is now making waves in aerospace. In a recent earnings call, AMD revealed that its Versal AI Core Adaptive Socks, Socks is referring to system on chip, their CPU, are now helping power SpaceX's Starlink satellites, which provide internet connectivity from orbit to users on Earth. During the call, AMD's CEO, Lisa Su, highlighted that aerospace companies, including SpaceX, are integrating these adaptive chips to boost satellite processing capabilities and data speeds. The Versal AI core chips are specially designed as a, once again, system on chip or SOC for adaptive customizable processing. These chips are built to handle tasks like AI processing and and wireless data acceleration, two capabilities critical for Starlink's satellite network. Absolutely the case. In practice, this means faster data processing, which allows SpaceX Starlink satellites to relay data back to Earth more efficiently, resulting in reduced lag or latency and more reliable connections, especially in hard to reach areas where traditional internet isn't available. Beyond aerospace, AMD noted that telecommunication companies have also adopted the Versal AI core chip for use with their 5G networks to improve real-time data processing speeds. This shows the chip's versatility in handling large data transfers in low latency environments, whether in space or across terrestrial cellular networks. AMD is now advancing to the next phase of its Versal chip lineup with a new chip codenamed Telluride. Telluride, isn't that like a car, SUV? Anyways, Telluride. 
set up to deliver up to 10 times more computing power of the current Versal models. CEO Lisa Su explained that Telluride will offer a major leap in AI capabilities, potentially attracting even more high-tech customers. With Telluride's enhanced performance, AMD's technology could play an even bigger role in the future of satellite and aerospace technology, particularly for companies like SpaceX. This partnership with SpaceX marks a significant expansion for AMD, illustrating how its advanced technology can meet the high demands of space and telecommunications applications. AMD's adaptive socks open the door to enhance connectivity on Earth and beyond, signaling a new frontier in data processing and reliable connectivity. The article finalizes with this, and I think this is very important. SpaceX didn't immediately respond to a request for comment, but there is an indication that the company has been working on its own processors for SpaceX Starlink equipment in addition to using AMD chips. The SpaceX job portal has listed several roles for silicon engineering for SpaceX Starlink. Quote, in this role, you'll be developing cutting edge next generation silicon for development in space and ground infrastructures around the globe. These chips are enabling connectivity in places it has previously not been available, affordable or reliable. I think that this is very important. And the reason being is yes, they are moving into an AMD chipset for their satellites, right? Because it's a really good let's say architecture, all right? It has a really good base behind it. It has now 10 times the computing power. It's also very lightweight when it comes to power. There's a lot that's really good about the AMD Versal chip. But, and this is the big but here, and this is where I have to look at this a little bit different and seeing what is going on on their portal, as they noted here in the article, I think this is a good thing. And when I say this, I mean the movement from using a third-party chip into your own chip. I think it's very important. There's a lot of reasons for it. But look, I mean, let me just give you an example with Apple, all right? Apple started out, what was it, 1984 or so. They started out with a Motorola chip. It was like this 68,000 Motorola chip. And then from that, they moved into like mid 90s, somewhere around there. They moved into a risk processor. And that was like a big thing. It was a power PC for many, many, many years. From power PC, that moved into Intel. They started using Intel, it was around 2006, 2005, somewhere around there. And then by 2020, what did they do? They went away from Intel and they went to Apple Silicon, their own silicon. It's an ARM-based silicon, but it's customized specifically for them. All of the code is their code, all right? This is very important, very important. That's how the, the Apple Silicon, the M1 started. Now we're on like M15 or whatever. You know how Apple is. What are we on, like iPhone 26 now or whatever? I don't know, that's what Apple does. But regardless, they have their own chip. And I really believe that SpaceX Starlink should do the exact same thing, even for their Starship or for anything. They should have their own base, all right? Their platform should be their own. Now, the reason I say that, number one, security. I mean, that's a big thing. Having complete control over the design, you end up with fewer points of attack, let's say, where malicious things can happen, back doors and crap like that that you don't want, especially when it comes to a rocket. <laughs> it's not a good thing, right, to be reliant on a third party because you don't know what's inside that code. Yeah, you could reverse engineer it, but little updates can get force fed in there or whatever, you don't want that, all right? That is a security risk. Also customization. When you make your own chip, you could do whatever the hell you want with it. Customizing a chip is really, really important. That's what Apple found out because instead of using Intel, they created their own chip, which is based on ARM, but that chip now can directly speak to their software. That's why even though their CPUs are, let's say, in the books or just looking at the pure processing power of them, much less than an Intel or an AMD-based processor. But since they have such a symbiotic relationship between the processor, the CPU, and the software, making those calls directly low-level, 
on a binary type of format. It is a much faster process. And that is one of the benefits of making your own. Once again, that speaking between software and hardware ends up being much better, more fine tuned. Also supply chain control, right? If you have a third party and they can't offer you chips for one reason or another, now what, you're not gonna launch anymore? No more satellites, no more rockets because there's some type of shortage? No, if you make your own silicon, well, guess what? The shortage is only your shortage in finding raw materials. Everything else is just semantics. You can do it in your factories. Also, you have the rate or scalability of it. You can very easily scale, all right, if it's your own chip, but if it is a third party, if they can't scale because they have other customers that need the pro well, there's a problem there, right? It's just not going to happen. And then of course you have IP right? Intellectual property. You don't have to worry about retaining an IP or intellectual property because it's yours. You don't need to worry about signing this, signing that, and all the rest of stuff. You end up avoiding, let's say, licensing fees and other fees for using the CPU or using the product in general. And then, of course, quality control. QC is massive. If you have a problem with the powering of a SpaceX Starlink satellite or a rocket or something, it's a problem, all right? So QC is always an issue. So I think SpaceX really needs to make their own, starting out with Starlink chips. They should not go through AMD. If they're going through AMD for now, that's fine. But as we see in their job listings, there are listings for silicon engineering, okay? Which is that baseline or that individual that will be able to come up with a CPU specific to SpaceX Starlink. And I think that is the best way to go. In my personal opinion, you have all of those positive factors in comparison to having the negative factors of having a third party as what you are beholden to. That is always an issue. That's what ended up happening during the COVID times with supply chain issues, right? Because a lot of the manufacturers were relying on specific companies to provide them with chips, third-party chips, and when they couldn't, guess what? Cars weren't manufactured for many, many, many months and other problems, obviously, just using that as an example, right? You need to make your own crap. Stop relying on third-party. It's a security risk, if anything. Anyways, guys, that's my thought on it. I want to know your thoughts. What do you think that SpaceX Starlink should do? Should they have engineers making their own chips or should they buy them from AMD? We know AMD is making money hand over fist. They don't even know what to do with all the money that they're making. They're making a ton, even more than Intel these days. It is a big deal, especially with the advent of AI. So guys, down below, I want to hear from you. If you don't want to write anything, put an emoji. I would appreciate that. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family, my merch, my tees, my shirts, my books, all the rest of the stuff. Go to jchristina.com and check it out. Go into the shop. See if there's something that is of interest to you. Once again, help me, my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.